And now chapter 12, Birth of Emperor Parikshit. The womb of Uttara, mother of Maharaj Parikshit, was spoiled by the dreadful and invincible Brahmastra weapon released by Ashvatthama. But Maharaj Parikshit was saved by the Supreme Lord. How was the great Emperor Parikshit, who was a highly intelligent and great devotee, born in that womb? How did his death take place? And what did he achieve after his death? We all respectfully want to hear about him, Maharaj Pariksit, to whom Shukdev Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge. So please speak on this matter. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Emperor Yudhishthir administered generously to everyone during his reign. He was exactly like his father. He had no personal ambition and was freed from all sorts of sense gratification because of his continuous service unto the lotus feet of the Lord Sri Krishna. News even reached the celestial planets about Maharaj Yudhishthir's worldly possessions, the sacrifices by which he would attain a better destination, his queen, his stalwart brothers, his extensive land, his sovereignty over the planet Earth, and his fame, etc. O oh, Brahmins, the opulence of the king was so enchanting that the denizens of heaven aspired for it. But because he was absorbed in the service of the Lord, nothing could satisfy him except the Lord's service. O oh, son of Brigu, Shonaka, when the child Pariksit, the great fighter, was in the womb of his mother, Uttara, and was suffering from the burning heat of the Brahmastra thrown by Ashvatthama, he could observe the Supreme Lord coming to him. He, the Lord, was only thumb high, but he was all transcendental. He had a very beautiful, blackish, infallible body, and he wore a dress of lightning yellow and a helmet of blazing gold. Thus he was seen by the child. The Lord was enriched with four hands, earrings of molten gold, and eyes blood-red with fury. As he loitered about, his club constantly encircled him like a shooting star. The Lord was thus engaged in vanquishing the radiation of the Brahmastra, just as the sun evaporates a drop of dew. He was observed by the child who thought about who he was. While thus being observed by the child, the Supreme Lord Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul of everyone, and the Protector of the Righteous, who stretches in all directions and who is unlimited by time and space, disappeared at once. Thereupon, when Oyak gradually evolved, the heir apparent of Pandu, who would be exactly like him in prowess,
famous in the world as Parikshit, which means examiner, because he would come to examine all human beings in his search after that personality whom he saw before his birth. Thus he would come to constantly contemplate him. As the moon, in its waxing fortnight, develops day after day, so the royal prince, Pariksit, very soon developed luxuriantly under the care and full facilities of his guardian grandfathers. Just at this time, King Yudhishthir was considering performing a horse sacrifice to get freed from sins incurred from fighting with kinsmen. But he became anxious to get some wealth, for there were no surplus funds outside of fines and tax collection. Understanding the hearty wishes of the king, his brothers, as advised by the infallible Lord Krishna, collected sufficient riches from the north left by King Maruta. By those riches, the king could procure the ingredients for three horse sacrifices. Thus the pious King Yudhishthir, who was very fearful after the battle of Kurukshetra, pleased Lord Hari, the personality of Godhead. Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, being invited to the sacrifices by Maharaj Yudhishthir, saw to it that they were performed by qualified or twice-born Brahmins. After that, for the pleasure of the relatives, the Lord remained a few months. O Shonaka, thereafter the Lord, having bade farewell to King Yudhishthir, Draupadi, and other relatives, started for the city of Dwarka, accompanied by Arjun and other members of the Yadu dynasty. of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Birth of Emperor Pariksit.